Good evening, everyone. Hi, this is Sherry Sims, founder of Black Career Women's Network, and thank you for tuning in for day four of our Career Smarts Virtual Masterclass. And tonight's guest is Miss Kelly Carr. She is a power presence expert, and I am so glad to have her here with us. Um, for those of you who are watching and you're and watching through our Facebook Live, please use our hashtag power presence and also hashtag career smarts for tonight's um, segment. Also, too, feel free during any any portion of our master class to ask Callie some questions. Um, that is what she is here for. And most of all, remember, let's talk about what it really means to bring your A game to the workplace. And, 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 and Callie is going to break down specifically what power presence means um, and how you can utilize that to elevate yourself in the workplace. And we're going to be talking about five, four, about four or five specific things, Kelly, we're going to be talking about to help to touch base on that and really help you to learn how to bring that power presence. And even not just for the workplace, for those of you who are entrepreneurs and you have clients that you want to meet with um, or contracts you're looking to obtain, you just, your presence overall is important. And Kelly is going to help to share with you um, what that means and then hopefully we get all you guys to engage in tonight's conversation. So welcome. Now, Kelly, I have to say, you know what? I forgot to get your bio out and read it. So please tell everybody. <laughs> please tell everybody about who you are, what you do. She is in Atlanta and I'm going to allow her to share share with us who she is. I am so sorry. We have plenty of time. That, to is, do okay. that is all right. We will roll with it. So yes. hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Kylie Carr. I I work with a lot of executive and executive bound women on their image, their executive presence, and their personal brands. I like to tell my clients that I help them to show up as their best selves online and in the office. I do a, a I lead a lot of leadership development programs as well. And my passion and I feel a part of my purpose is to help to see more black women get into the C-suite. So I spent my career working in various roles in various industries in corporate America, started my, my career in human resources in the manufacturing industry, spent about five years in management consulting where I worked in many different industries within management consulting at Accenture. I uh, took a couple of years off to get my MBA and made a career switch to marketing and spent the next phase of my career leading marketing departments, working in digital media, media and entertainment and technology departments. And in 2014, I started my own firm after leading a, a marketing department uh, for a while and coming to a, a pivotal part in my career where I had a lot of life events, which turned out to be a catalyst for me to decide to go out on my own. And what I realized were that there were so many things that helped and hindered women from advancing their careers that were not talked about in the classroom, they were not talked about in performance reviews, and they were things that many of my colleagues, my friends, sometimes even my bosses would come to me to ask my advice on. And I decided to devote this next phase of my career to helping women to, to be their best selves. Fantastic. And so I'm so excited to have Callie on tonight. She knows I've been wanting to work with her for the last couple of years now. So I'm so excited to be talking about power presence and how important this is and specifically how it impacts um, to a trajectory for black women. And so let's just go ahead and jump right in and get started. Um, good evening, Robin. Robin says good evening. Hi, Robin. Hi. Glad you're here. Welcome. I do see some others real quick before we get started. I want to give a shout out to, I see Leah is on here as well, and Sylvia, and also Renita. So hello, ladies. I can't see the rest of them because I can't scroll over, but hello, ladies, and welcome. So let's talk about personal power. Um, let's talk about what, what that is, and what is personal power from a perspective of how should the women who are viewing think about um, their own personal power in the workplace or in business? Sure. When I think about personal power, we all are different than the 7 billion plus people in this world. So your personal power is really what you have to offer the world that is different than anyone else. They're your talents, your skills, your experiences, your passions, your purpose. 
So all of those things together set you apart from everyone else. All too often we find ourselves hearing that, you know, you have to emulate the best, the best leaders, you know, be like Oprah, be like Jack Welsh, be like, you know, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg and all of these leaders who have had fantastic and phenomenal careers. But if you try to emulate other people, yes, you may gain some more success than if you didn't know some of their, their success uh, traits. However, unless you lean into your unique strengths, your unique contribution to the world, you will not be as successful as you can be. And it's, it, are, it is those things that help you determine and, and really lean into your personal power. That is your personal power. Okay, so just so everyone knows that this whole the whole base of Career Smarts Virtual Mastermind um, of this week is really about power moves to in building an empowered career. That's what this week has been all about. So um, again, this is a th these things we're going to be talking about tonight are really power moves that you can make in your career. And I know that we talked a little bit about this when we covered this. Um, we we're talking with Tony last night in reference to politics of promotion. But we're going to be really diving specifically into this with with Callie tonight. So thinking about what do you want to bring power to in your career? What needs power in order for you to shift and make a change in moving forward um, and seeing um, the results that you want to see? Again, because our career smarts is all about clarity, strate being strategic, and then and then having solutions. And so just thinking about that from the perspective of clarity, uh, strategy and solutions equals career smarts in our in BCWN world. <laughs> That's our philosophy. So think about that as Callie is sharing information with you or tips and tools tonight that can take you to the next level. Okay, just wanted to share that with you. So in reference to personal power, what are some of the things that you, that women should be recognizing that they need to change or recognize and say, you know what, I think I need to kind of step my game up when it comes to my presence. What things should they be recognizing? So when it comes to your presence, your presence is essentially how you are showing up in the world and how well you're aligning how you show up with who you really are. At the end of the day, when somebody meets you for the first time, that it takes seven seconds, that's all, seven seconds to make a first impression. It takes 250 milliseconds to communicate how trustworthy and how competent you are. And those are two of the, the components that help people understand how, how much of a leader you're, or how much leadership capabilities you have. So you really want to make sure that when you are presenting yourself to the world and at work especially, that you are showing up in a way that's aligned with the value you bring to the table. And I, I often talk about, you know, your your appearance is a tool, right? It is a tool to show people. It's not, you know, some people say, well, I don't have time to go shopping or, you know, I, I, my, my appearance shouldn't matter. And this is not about how how beautiful you are or how conventionally conventionally attractive you are. It's really about how poised and polished and professional you are in the workplace and are you showing up in a way that when people look at you they see your capabilities they see that you are a leader even before you are one so that's really important i love that i love that this because i was very excited about this conversation tonight because i think this is hugely important and specifically for black women that when we walk into the room that that is felt they can see that in the, that way it kind of does alleviate some of the unconscious biases. I'm sure we'll cover some of that as well tonight um, and, and how you can shift that. But this is good. So let's, this is a good segue into confidence. But, you know, how confident are you um, in terms of being able to display presence? What does it take to gain that confidence to um, have power presence? Yes, there was a um, there was a study done in 2012 when they were looking at all of the leadership traits that executives had, and they and they surveyed tens of thousands of leaders, and they found that women outperformed men 
at, on almost every single element, things like listening and interpersonal skills and strategic thinking, except for confidence. And Sheryl Sandberg talks about this in Lean In. We've all heard about it. I experienced this in business school where, you know, we'd be in the classroom and a, a professor would ask a question and a lot of the guys in the room, maybe they would be 40% sure of the answer, but they would raise their hand and deliver it confidently. And many of us women in the, the room, we would think about it and lament about it and think, okay, I'm not sure, I'm not positive. You know, unless we were 120% sure or certain that we knew the answer, we wouldn't raise our hands. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, people think that being competent is more, more important than confidence but there is more of a correlation between confidence and success than competence and success. And that's, that's the hard truth. If people don't believe that you are competent, then they won't, they won't have any confidence in you. So if you're, not comp if you're not showing up and believing in yourself and showing that you believe in your capabilities, no one else can. So right. it's, it really is plaguing women. It's plaguing women so what can i mean what can we do to to change that or what can what can women do to change this um yes we are competent we know we're competent right but in order to show that we have to have confidence so how can we exuberate that um where you, you know people see that without feeling like she's being cocky or she's arrogant i mean even if it isn't just in the way we deliver the messages or how we um show up timely with what we're doing what what's one thing our viewers can write down and take notes and say, okay, I'm going to try that. A part of it is indeed faking it before you make it. There is a <laughs> proof in that. Think about who, it, who are you? If you close your eyes and think about who am I at my peak state? Who, if I think about the best version of myself and my the best version of myself on top of my game, what does she look like? How does she carry herself? How does she talk? How does she behave? How does she interact with other people? Emulate those things. And as you start emulating those things, your brain will start picking that up. And the next thing you know, it's second nature. So things like speaking in a way that is is confident and assertive, you know, assertive, assertive, assertiveness is not aggressiveness. You know, people worry about, and especially black women, we feel like we're going to be seen as the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. and, and some of us, unfortunately, get caught in that trap. And when that typically happens is when we we use our power to be power over people versus having our power come from within. Right. If your power is coming from within and you're looking to be your best self and not better than anybody else, mm -hmm. then you will likely be less at risk of being seen as the, the angry black woman or the arrogant black woman. Now, let's talk a little bit about this because you and I have had this conversation before in the past about code switching, right? <laughs> so, and, and so, you know, share the difference, you know, in terms of code switching versus being your authentic self, the fake it till you make it, and the confidence of what that means. Because mm -hmm. I think that some women can confuse, confuse this with the code switching if they feel like they're not being their, their, their authentic selves when they fake it till they make it. <laughs> Yeah, so fake it, faking it until the fake it until you make it is faking the best version of yourself before you feel like you're there. It's not faking who you are. Now, granted, in your work environment, you need to understand what the cultural norms are. Yes. What what are the cultural norms? What what is um, considered appropriate behavior? And how can you be your most authentic self within the context of the environment that you're in? Granted, you may feel you're at your best when you wear um, 
big hoop earrings and flamboyant colors and a lot of ruffles and your hair, you know, different colors. That may be your comfort zone. However, in your work environment, that may not be embraced. So you need to understand what your what the, the what the norms of your work environment are and figure out how you can be, you know, maybe 80% your authentic self and then up to 20% is how much they will embrace who you are. And over time, over time, as you develop that intellectual capital or that political, and say you know, intellectual capital, it's that political capital. As over time, you're able to develop that so that you can show up as your 100% most authentic self. The, the, the reality is, Many of our com our corporations are not designed for any of us, black women, you know, not even just black women, any of us to show up as 100 percent our authentic selves. And I mean, when you think about it, if you're just like going on a date, if you're going on a date, you're not going to show all your baggage on that first date. You're over time, you're going to reveal more and more about yourself. And you need to develop that trust and develop that vulnerability over over a period of time. Now, I love this. So I put this up here because, you know, we all have heard the A20 rule, the A20 <laughs> yes. rule from like, you know, from, um, you know, Tyler Perry's movie. But I think this is such a great analogy. I, thank you for that. I love that A20 rule is using it for this where we can be 20, 80 percent ourselves and 20 percent. We kind of have to, you know, scale it back, you know, a little bit. So I love that. So you guys write that down and think about that. Instead of thinking about the whole code switching thing or feeling like that's what you have to do, think about it from this perspective. This is such a great tip from Callie in terms of using the 80-20. And I think I'm going to share that with, with, with my with my uh, my um, clients. I think I like that. Share it. Share it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then Robin says, um, this is so helpful. Great info for me as a new entrepreneur, as an image consultant. Oh, wow. Great. Wonderful. Awesome. This is great. So I, I'm loving this 80-20 rule. I'm all over that. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm awesome. all over it. Okay, so let's gonna go ahead and go to um, well. Now let me back up before we go into the next one. Um, in terms of confidence, um, you know, I think I want. What about? I know we're talking about the workplace, but let's talk a little bit before we go into the next one in reference to confidence when it comes to entrepreneurs. Okay, it's a whole nother. I feel a whole nother element of confidence that needs to be displayed in terms of presence when it comes to clients if they're doing things like this where they have to be visible in their brands and getting comfortable with that what are some of the tips that you can give um entrepreneurs who may be watching um you know in terms of developing their personal power or their power presence um from a business standpoint sure um a few things number one and i had a conversation about this with someone last week who was um thinking about going on her own and she was saying, you know, as I'm thinking about new clients, you know, the way she was talking about the clients that she wanted to go after, it was almost like she was saying, well, maybe they'll do me a favor and be willing to take a chance on me, even though I'm not on my own yet or I'm not full, fully um, on my own. And what I find is when entrepreneurs are new, they're new entrepreneurs, whether they're still working full time or not. There is a lack of confidence that sometimes creeps up. And I would advise and encourage entrepreneurs in particular to realize how much you are bringing to the table. And right. even though you may be a new entrepreneur, that doesn't mean that you're new at the, the work that you're doing. There's so much value that you're bringing to the table that anyone would be so lucky to have your, your expertise and, and, have your services or products or whatever it is. So don't lose sight of the the value you're bringing to the table and make, it, make sure that as you're describing your services, your products, whatever you're selling, whatever you're, you're offering, that you are delivering it in a way that is confident, right? Because if somebody is Thinking about if you tell somebody, well, this is my first time doing it. Let me, you know, can you give me a give me a chance? They're not. They probably won't be confident that you're going to deliver. Whereas if you say, I have this great product, it will do X, Y, and Z for you. It will help you in this these ways. Then 
they, they don't even have to know how long you've been doing it. It's all about how you deliver it. My first speaking engagement with, um, actually my first paid speaking engagement after going out on my own, I started talking on, on social media about the work that I was doing. And someone came to me to ask me to come deliver a workshop at their office. And they didn't know it was my first paid one. But I, I had my, all my ducks in a row. I came polished. I came professional. I had my, my things buttoned up and I was learning as I was going, but they didn't know it because I knew that I had to show up in a certain way and deliver in a certain way and carry myself in a certain way in order for that there to be a second workshop, <laughs> whether it was with them or somebody else. Right. And the, I like that. So again, it goes back to fake it till you make it. But again, when you do have the knowledge and the expertise or you bring that to the table out the gate, then you, you do have, a, you should be able to have the confidence to move forward with, with it because you have the level of expertise that can display that. So I, I like that. Okay, let's go into the next one, which is executive presence. Mm -hmm. And so I, for women who are viewing, you know, do not be intimidated by executive, the word executive, right? Because you can still be, in your current role, even if you're not in the C-suite and you can still display executive presence because it's all about where you want to go, not where you are currently. And so let's kind of just dive into that, Callie, and share what, um, what you mean by executive presence and what goes into that. Sure. A lot of people hear this term executive presence and they're like, you know, People tell me that I need to have more executive presence, but what is it? It's such a nebulous thing. You know, what, what, what is this whole executive presence thing? In, the, in a nutshell, executive presence is how much or how well you show up as a leader. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what level you are, if you are, say, 24 years old, you're two years out of school, but you show up to work, in a very polished and professional manner. And the people, your superiors can see your capabilities, they can see your potential, then more likely than not, you're going to advance faster than someone who may have more education than you, but shows up to work as more inexperienced, less eager, less, less, or less mature. So things that go into executive presence include your communication, how well you communicate, how, how effectively you communicate. Again, your confidence, your appearance, your, um, you know, just how you carry yourself. And when I talk about communication, it's not only written communication or verbal communication. It's also vocal communication, not only what you say, but how you say it. It's also how you behave, your body language and how that comes into play. So if you are speaking softly and hunched over in your meetings, people are, not, they're not going to see your leadership potential, but if you come in and you own that room and you are polished and professional and are on top of your game and can't contribute things that are thought provoking and show that you really are truly listening, and that you can develop the right relationships because that's a huge piece of it too. Absolutely. Yes. So not necessarily related to your presence, but it, your presence can impact how well you develop your relationships. And those relationships is what can catapult you into the higher ranks. So your presence can impact. I'm going to make sure I'm going to write this up here so they can um, see this in terms of that your presence can impact your relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's something you guys need to, um, there you go. It's small, but it's there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, yeah, because your presence does impact relationships. And so I think it's great to be able to do that. And so, um, Glenn says, I love contributing ideas that are thought provoking, which is good. And then Aisha says, this is, this is um, so important. Um, to the show that there we go she says so important and then robin says so true i'm excited with the information being delivered here so you guys you know take advantage of this opportunity to talk to callie ask her some questions you know let's let's get it let's get that dialogue going in terms of being able to open this up so uh, again no judgment zones this is a great time to ask your questions in reference to 
what you want to do or what you need to do to increase your power presence, whether it's in work or in business. This is a great time to ask her that. And I think that the executive presence for me, I think, um, is important. And I, I think I talked a little bit about this when I was on the uh, last night's uh, master class with uh, Tony Howard. And I talked about when I started in um, staffing many, many, many years ago in the early parts of my career. And, you know, I had to leave college um, after the first semester of college for circumstances beyond my control when I was right out of high school. So I didn't get a chance to complete my, um, my education in the traditional fashion. And I would go to work and I would emulate um, other women. I would see how, and with me, a lot of the jobs I've had, I was the only. So I would emulate what I would see in terms of the presence of how these women carried themselves, how they spoke. Um, and I would, you know, kind of, I would emulate that. And so a lot of people assumed that I was college educated because of the way that I carried myself. So it was important for me to do that so I could be taken seriously because I was ambitious and wanted to be to move forward in my own career that I used a lot of that that presence piece to have that to, to get that that you know impression that you know she's she's polished professional as I as Aisha would say with her business polish polished and professional um, so I could be taken seriously you know so I think there is was I faking it so I make it not necessarily about in my from a, I was using the 80 20 for the majority of the time, but I didn't have the education. So it was so, it was so important to me to have that presence and show what I can do to outweigh that I didn't have the education at the time. If that makes sense. Right. So just being transparent and sharing. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And I realized the one thing that I didn't mention that is important is your personal brand. and that in order to develop those relationships too, you need to be 100%, you need to understand what you bring to the table and how you want to show up to other people. Our personal brand is essentially what people are saying about us when we're not in the room. Mm -hmm. And whether or not we, some people say, should you or should you not have a personal brand? We all have a personal brand. Yes. Now, how well we develop it is up to us. So once we understand how we want to show up, mm -hmm. then our presence is essentially the manifestation of that. No, I think that is absolutely on point because it's 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 almost it's a mind thing as well, right? So you're gonna you do that and you're gonna you're gonna automatically show up in the right way when when you do that. So no, it all those things tie in together, the 80-20, the confidence, you know, all those things I think tie in together. This is good stuff, you guys. This is good stuff. Okay, so our next one is um, how, oh, we're going to talk about this for a while. So we're right on time with the time frame for this. And I'll go ahead and show this. Okay, how does presence impact promotion? Now, I know you and I had a little brief discussion about, uh, you know, really how, how, how this impacts black women specifically when it comes to this. So Let's really dive in deep into how your presence impacts promotion for, for black women. Yeah, so one of the biggest things, and, and I saw Susan was chiming in. Hey, Susan, um, one of my clients went through my Power Presence course. Oh, nice. Welcome, Susan. So one thing that I see a lot of, uh, or that I hear from a lot of black women is that they want to focus on getting the right degrees, getting the right skills, getting the right certifications. Mm -hmm. Let me do the work yeah. and prove myself. Yes. Instead of, you know, you want to make sure that you are good at what you do. Absolutely. Like that's table stakes. Table stakes. You need to be good at what you do and do quality work. But instead of adding on all of those certifications that you may or may not need, you need to truly focus on how you are showing up. How, what is your reputation like? Do you have the right relationships? And are the right people seeing what you're doing? So oftentimes we focus on, you know, doing the work and doing, and also, oh, by the way, early in your career, doing, being a hard worker is really important. Later in your career, being a smart worker is much more important because if you're seen as a hard worker, you're just going to get more work. 
versus yeah. <laughs> if you are a smart worker and you empower your teams to do the the be the hard workers, yeah. then you can rise above that. You're seen as a leader. You can lead them effectively and not be in the weeds. So what I find is that one of the biggest things that that prevents people or several things that prevent people from getting promoted are number one, not understanding what they bring to the table and focusing too much on being the best versus being the best them. So what makes you you? What makes you different than the other people? Going back to you know what we were talking about earlier, you know, there's only one you. There's a a a, a, a quote by a woman, uh, and I'm forgetting her name. She has a um, a book called The Fascination Advantage, and she says that be different is better than better. Sally Hogshead is her name. It just came to me. Sally Hogshead. Okay. Different is better than better. So too, all too often we focus on being the best. And hey, don't get me wrong. Being the best is great, especially like in, in athletics. You know, being better is being is better than being different. Yeah. <laughs> but in 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 business in the office you can be just as great of a worker as a person next to you but if you show how you are different than that other person and you you have something about you that's more memorable then you will likely go further than the other person yeah, and that's great. I know that on our the first night of our master class, Monday night with Jasmine Force of uh, Jobbing with Jazz, she that was that was what we talked about was all the whole entire master class was uh, your uniqueness. Um, you know, showing what that is. You know, what is your as she says. I'm using Jazz words. I don't know if she's watching or not, but um, Jazz talked about your magic sauce. That's her thing. Oh, so, I love that your I magic know. sauce. Talked about her, your magic sauce, and so um, in terms of your uniqueness, this is great and showing what's different um, about you. So I, I love that. So let's, you know, I know you talked about relationships is important, right? So relationships, we'll use Jazz's term. Give me what's your magic sauce, right? <laughs> and then um, the other was what was it? I, I heard you say it already, because I wanted to capture that to make sure we share it. I know relationships. We talked about confidence. Confidence. Yes. And um, the 80-20, which I, which I yes. love. Yes, we and talked about communication as well. Yes, that was a communication. Yes. So, so the communication yes. point, let's talk about that because you've got communication that can either help or hinder your, you know, help or hinder you, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like from a present standpoint are some of the key things that can help that can make sure you have clear and concise communication um, that goes along with your personal brand? There's something that you could be known for, you know, your sure. signature style of communication, um, I think, is something that's, that's hugely important so people can be clear on how they can approach you in terms of that. So I'll talk about one thing that is important to establish related to your personal brand, but then I'll also talk about something that um, is important for women and especially black women to keep in mind when it comes to communication. So when it comes to your personal brand, you want one of the things that I ask all of my clients to do is to identify what are the three to five adjectives you want people to think of when they think of you. So if they if I ask 10 people who know you to describe you using three words or three adjectives, what do you want them to say? And it's good to actually ask a bunch of people who know you to describe you using three adjectives to see what they actually do say so that you know what your baseline is and what modifications you need to make in terms of how you show up. So that's one thing. You want to make sure that the way you communicate is con and anything you put out to the world, whether it's how you show up visually, you know, you, the way you speak, you know, how you write, uh, how you behave, all of those things need to be aligned with those words. Now, there is also this concept called the double bind. And I, I read a book called Playing Big by a woman by the name of Tara Moore. And she talks about how women and any underrepresented group falls victim to what they call the double bind. And that is that, you know, earlier I was talking about you get 250 milliseconds to show up as being trustworthy or competent. And those are really two important factors when it comes to leadership. Well, with people in underrepresented 
categories we are seen as either competent or trustworthy. It's really difficult for us to be seen as both. If we're if we show up as too competent, then what's the flip side? Okay, she's she's cold. She's too she's abrasive. She's arrogant. She's the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. if is too, she's only focused on her competence and not her trustworthiness. And trustworthiness, that's where things like warmth come in. But if we're too warm, then we're seen as, oh, well, she's a pushover. You know, she's, she's too nice. So it's really hard to have that balance. Now, if you are a white male, you don't need to have either. I mean, look at our president. I'm not going to get into politics. <laughs> but... You can just, you know, be charismatic to a few mm -hmm. or can deliver a good message sometimes. And yeah. that is enough. But for us, we need to be trustworthy and competent. Unfortunately, look at look at uh, Hillary Clinton. She was she showed up as competent to many, but not warm. And that is her. But Barack Obama. He had he had the magic sauce. Yeah. So yeah, you watch him using your word magic sauce. Yeah, you watch yes. <laughs> so he has a good balance. So that, those are things to keep in mind to make sure that you your how you communicate is consistent with your personal brand, but that you show that you're smart, but also that you're warm. So I love that. I absolutely love that. So that's something that we need to stay conscious of to make sure that we're displaying both. Now when it comes to, because you know we're gonna we we're gonna get to this, the mm -hmm. unconscious biases that are you know recognizing those, and then making sure that we're using our magic sauce to you know how should we use our communication style to um, mm -hmm. kind of you know eliminate that or you know um, change that perception that you may be fighting that you didn't know that's there. And that's a tough one because you know there's only so much that we can do. When it yeah. comes to unconscious bias, you know, people come to the table with their own experiences, mm -hmm. with their own, um, you know, perceptions or judgments, yep. their, their biases that we may or may not know. So what we can do, what's in our control is to show up again as the best version of ourselves and be intentional with how we communicate yes. with the work that the work quality that we deliver and the relationships that we create and making sure on our end that we show up in the right way. Now, can we do anything? I mean, I, I even, you know, in some of my workshops, I say, you know, if you have red hair, you have no idea. Maybe somebody was abused by a teacher with red hair. You have no idea about that. And there's nothing that you can do to change that experience that that person had. However, if you show up as competent, and kind and try your best to make develop a good relationship with that person and show up as best the best way that you can then maybe that will trigger to that person that oh even though i had a reaction because that person had red hair she's really good she's great like i i let me get to know her better and let me let me try my best to work well with her yeah i think that's great i think it is i think the power is in the communication of how you deal with how you deal with that, I, I so agree. Um, and then I also think it's important that you do not be afraid to have those um, uncomfortable or crucial conversations you may need to have um, to okay. help to get to help them to have a better understanding of who you are um, and to help to eliminate some of those perceptions. You know, I always say it's not our responsibility to um, have to, to. It's our. Well, should I should say. It's our responsibility to help them to understand who we are as professionals, but also to to correct the perception if it if it tends to, to impact the relationship um, and, the, and the, of course, the work, too. Right. And what you don't want to do is make an assumption that yeah. everyone has everyone's biases is going to impact. A relationship that you'll have at work or you know they you make an assumption that somebody thinks a certain way about you before you even get give them the chance absolutely and yeah that you can reveal parts of yourself over time to show them who you are even outside of work it gives other people the permission 
of sharing more about themselves and it creates a, a work environment that's a lot more comfortable and and just better to to work in i agree i absolutely agree so uh, morgan you're so funny morgan says he, he said i'm about to throw my computer free <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, Morgan. Now we need you to keep looking. Right, so, right. Look, back to expensive, girl. Don't throw that thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Leah, so this is what I need to understand. Absolutely. You know, this is. I mean, this is so important when it comes to um, the communication again. And 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 Callie perfectly said it in terms of. You know, you want to be able to, you want to make sure that you understand clearly, clearly that there is an issue of them understanding who you are before you just kind of confront them, of course. But you just can't be afraid, um, you know, to do that. Let's see. Robin says here, um, Kelly, I started, I, I, start, I started was a vision board. This helps me look at my goals and visions, giving me confidence about what I need to convey when I meet with clients or conducting networking events. Would you suggest something like this? Yes, vision boards. I am all about the power of visualization and vision boards are a great way to put to paper the things that you want to manifest. So I I am a big, big believer in this. And in fact, I, I interviewed somebody on my podcast earlier today who was talking about how vision boards have impacted her life. But I believe that it's, effective to think about what you want to manifest in your career, in your business, in your personal life. Find images of those things and and truly like really take that in and truly visualize yourself doing those things like down to how it will feel to be that person and to have those experiences and those things. But not only that, you can't just stop there. Then it's creating action plans so that you can take yourself there, get yourself there. Because all too often we make these vision boards and it's like, oh, I want this, I want this Maserati. I want this big mansion. I want the, these red bottoms. But at the end of the day, number one, they're, they're, you know, physical things, you know, and their vanity things. But number two, you don't put any actions in place to get there. So that is what's going to be the difference between somebody who's just looking at pretty pictures and somebody who is experiencing something that they have envisioned for themselves. No, I love it. I think it's great. So Aisha says, um, the, be the best you versus being the best. I think it's yeah. the best. Yes, yes. Yes. This one says your magic sauce. I know we love Jazz for that, and now we love it. Um, also, Leah says also show that you're relatable. I think it's yeah. like talking about in terms of this, you know, the presence. And then Robin says, imagine um, your image. Yeah. Yes, I, I've also done, and I've encouraged other people to do um, image based image-based vision board. So not only, so personal style as well. So not only what you want to manifest in your professional and personal lives, but also how you want to show up and getting some inspiration for, you know, what kind of, what kind of appearance do you want to have? What type of um, personal style do you want to convey? What's aligned with some of those personal branding attributes that you have defined for yourself? Right. So Susan says vision boards are great. Um, must have an action plan, which is so true. Robin says, thank you. And Leah says, question, how do you add your vision board if you are still figuring out your, ne your next rollout? You are looking to gain more clarity. Okay. Well, you can, a vision board doesn't have to be, you know, one and done. You don't have to, you know, create a vision board in January and that has to be your vision board for the rest of the year. You can add to it. You can modify it. You can create several vision boards as you gain more clarity. Things that you may think you want today may not be what you really want three months from now. So it's good to evolve your vision boards to create new ones over a point in time. 
So, um, you know, if, and, and using that to gain clarity, is that what you're saying in terms of her being able to get clear about what she wants? Is that what you're wanting, Leah, is to get clear about what should be on your vision board or just get clear about what's the next, what's the next thing? So we'll let her just give a chance to, to respond to that. Um, we have another one here. Tiara Hiker, thanks for tuning in tonight. She says, I think I, she says, I think the lack of the action plan is why vision boards don't resonate with me. I'd much rather just have the plan, but I see the benefit in combining the two. Yes, yes. And let me tell you, visualization is so important. I've been doing this morning routine every January. This is now my fourth January. And it's based upon this book called The Miracle Morning by, um, by Hal Elrod. And it's a six step morning routine. And one of the steps is visualization. And in that step, I usually combine it with with meditation, but I do have a vision board that I, I take in. I really see myself, but then I think about, okay, how will it feel? Like really envisioning myself mm -hmm. as that person who has those things. So you see the vision, you envision yourself, you know, embodying those things, and then you develop and execute that action plan so that you can make sure you get there. Yep, and I think that's 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 good to do. Um, okay, hold on. She does show this. Oh, she does something else. She says she says yes, exactly to gain clarity in what the next role is using the vision board as one of those tools. Okay, as one we uh, we was able to to get clear and, and answer that for her. You know, it's so funny for me. Um, I, I, again, I'm with Tierra. I see the purpose. I, I see how vision boards can be great, but I have to have an action plan along with that because I always have the pictures in my mind anyway. And then I'm someone that if I end up dreaming about it, it's coming to pass. I mean, that's just always mm -hmm. kind of how it's been for me. So if I am in my dream and I'm doing it, I mean, that means it's going to happen. Now, how it happens or when it happens or whatever is a different story. But, you know, for me, I know that that's kind of making sure my choices are going to be leading to that path in some some capacity. So no, I agree. I'm with you, Tierra. I have to have the vision, the vision board and also the written plan and kind of combine those together. Um, I'm a visual person, but I definitely need a little bit more of the, the action piece to go along with that. So I like that as well. All right, so we've got about, um, it's for 847, so we've got about 12 minutes left. Please target away your questions. Callie is here. Um, let's recap in terms of the um, the presence impact promotions. I just want to make sure that women understand um, clearly what's the one key thing you want them to walk away with when they think about presence, um, how it impacts promotion. Really, I think the the most important thing to think about is how you are showing up and making sure that the people around you, the decision makers who can influence whether or not you get that promotion, know your value, not only by how hard you're working, but also because every day when you show up, you are being a great representation of that company's brand as well as your own. Okay, so how are you showing up, thinking about that and staying conscious of you know what you know what that means all right what's the one thing for executive presence that you like them to walk away with that's important to keep in mind one thing one thing and, and it really is similar <laughs> you know in terms because it is how you how you show up but i will say i think with executive presence it is not only you know how you show up but it's your per understanding what your personal brand is and making sure that your presence is aligning your personal brand with the outward manifestation in in service of the leadership position that you want to have. I like that. So align your personal brand. So you guys hear that? Make sure it's in alignment, um, and that's great. That's the. That goes back to just making sure, like, even um, that your core values are in alignment with the, with the organization, so to speak. So I like that. Align your personal brand, you guys, making sure that that is cohesive, you know, um, together. All right, good. I love that. Um, oh, that's an old question. Sorry about that, Lee. I thought it was a new one. All right, making sure that you guys, um, that you still got some time to ask questions to, to Callie. 
Now, as far as confidence is concerned, we really covered some great information with that. What's the key thing you want them to walk away from tonight in terms of confidence? In uh, look, I know what I want to say. The eighty twenty rule, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, it's the eighty twenty rule, um, and I said, you know, fake it until you make it. But there's um, a, a quote that I love that Amy Cuddy, who's a Harvard professor, talks about: is fake it until you become it. Oh, I like that. Fake, fake it until you become it. Because okay. making it, you know, what is making it? You really want to fake it because what you're faking is becoming the person that you want to be. This is so true. Fake it and become it. I love that. I think that that sounds so much more evolving to me than you know, fake it till you make it, so to speak. Yeah, I like that. It's so so, so much more of like an evolution piece. So I love that. All right. Fake it until you become it, you guys. I love that. I'm gonna to have to put that on a quote. I'm gonna say that and then <laughs> Kelly. I'm gonna have to put that on my um, my uh, in my Facebook group. All right. In terms of personal power overall, you know, um, you know, I think that we all look at that. <laughs> look, <laughs> the lady says, she says, I am stealing that. <laughs> Still, Leah, use it. Isn't that fabulous? I love it. I, I feel like I feel like the same that was going to be like you know. I'm just evolving. It's going to be an evolution. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I love that. And Susan says she loves it too. She says I love it. Thank you to you be coming. Yes, I love that too. So um, in terms of okay, back to what I was saying, which is in terms of the personal power overall. Um, what is the one thing or the one action item when it comes to personal power that the ladies can start to implement tonight, tomorrow? Sure. I would ask yourself five things. One, what are your skills? And your skills are things that you have developed over time. Maybe it's through experience. Maybe it's through schooling. Um, what are your talents? Your talents are things that you were born with that no one can do better than you. Like you don't even have to try hard, and mm -hmm. you can do them well. Um, what your what are your passions? So what are some of those things that you just lose yourself in? Um, what are some of those things that people come to you for that you enjoy? Uh, number four would would be what is your purpose? So what are what do you want your legacy to be? You know, what What do you want to be a lasting, something that's lasting even after you're gone? And then finally, what experiences have you had that have made you the person who you are today? So those five things all together comprise what your personal power is and what makes you different than anyone else in the world. I like this. I like this. I hope you guys were able to grab these. I tried to put them up here as fast as she was talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, in terms of, you know, being able to write these down, experiences, passion, what is your purpose? Um, I think it was, um, I'm, I'm missing two. And skills. Talents and skills. So there you go. Um, making sure that you you grab those. But those are, those, I mean, those are great. Now, Robin says, she says she will be faking it, okay? <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> like I will be faking it. All right. I mean, and then, you know what? Faking it and then becoming it. So, like I said, it's an evolution. That's how I like it. So exactly. I, I'm loving, exactly. Absolutely loving it. All right. So, Kelly, where can our viewers find you? Please share with them where they can find you on social media. Sure. I'm at Kylie Carr everywhere, and that's K A I L E I C A R R. You can also find me at KylieCar.com. Um, my podcast is called Beyond the Business Suit, and that's on iTunes, on Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts, as well as BeyondTheBusinessSuit.com. And I am I actually have been on the business suit. I mean, on the business, on the Beyond the Business Suit. Yes, you have, Terry. <laughs> Now, and also, she interview. Yes, and, she, and she has some really awesome interviews, you guys. So definitely check out her podcast. It is fantastic. And then share with them what you've got coming up in 2018. Sure. I was just telling Sherry, I have a few things coming up. I have some 
live podcast events coming to different cities around the country. Um, definitely Atlanta, likely New York and Chicago. I'm working on a book that's a compilation of some of the secret weapons of successful women that I have gained through doing now um, 123 episodes or 124 as of today, episodes of my podcast. I am leading my second cohort of the Power Presence Program, which Susan, who's joining in, was a part of my first cohort. And I'm also doing a lot of uh, leadership development work, both with corporations, as well as launching my first leadership development program of my own that I will be um, in, that will include women from many different companies in service of helping more black women get into the C-suite. It's amazing, you guys. So Callie is doing some really awesome work to support black women and black women at work and helping them to elevate themselves. And so I think your program is called Emerge, right? Is it called Emerge? Well, yes, I am. I'm leading a, um, a leadership program through an organization called um, the IT Senior Management Forum. And this is for um, fem black female IT executives or IT leaders. And that is called Emerge. So that's a year long program that I'm leading right now as well, which is fantastic. So if you are a black woman in IT and you're looking for a great leadership program, our next cohort starts in May of this year and we're accepting applications until April 1st. All right, there you have it. And so Leah says, yes, she's here. She's in Chicago. So she'll be looking out for the events um, and, and the book as well. So this is so exciting. I'm so, so Kelly, this has been so great. And thank you for um, your presence, your, your power presence, you know, coming on <laughs> to our, you know, tonight's masterclass and sharing, you know, sharing your gifts and talents with us in terms of how we can boss up, you know, from, mm -hmm. from a perspective of being true leaders and helping people understand who we are from, from the, the present standpoint. So thank you so much for that. Any last questions you have for, um, for Kelly tonight before um, I kind of go into some BCWN things. So just go ahead and type them in and we'll make sure to share those. So we'll keep moving right on forward. Oh, okay. Leah says, yes, so very necessary. IT presence, yes, it is so necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hot things that's going to be going on in 2018. IT, politics, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. <laughs> are going to be <laughs> hot things that are going to be topics for um, 2018. So um, it's you know important that she's touching in on helping women in that space, which is awesome because it's needed. Absolutely, it's, it's needed. So tomorrow night's guest it is our final master class of the week. And we're going to be having Minda Hartz on with us. And Minda is the founder and CEO of The Memo. And for those of you who are not familiar with The Memo, The Memo is an organization that is in New York. And she really has the same initiative that I do, which is to help to empower women of color in the workplace. And so she is gonna be um, on our last masterclass of the week. And we're gonna be talking about the glass ceiling and talking about um, how to be able to um, manage or deal with um, you know, biases, not unconscious biases, but biases in the workplace to, um, to get a seat at the table. So we're gonna be talking about pretty much a raw um, you know, how to get a seat at the table. And then also this week, kind of, it'll be our roundup conversation for the week too, um, in terms of kind of my second version of um, realities in the workplace that every black woman should know. Um, I originally did the part one when we did this uh, empowerment series like this back in 2015, when I did a video series like this. And so this is gonna be an extended conversation um, of that and that's going to be tomorrow night. It's going to be the, the, the uh, final one at 8 p.m. right back here um, in Facebook Live. Robin says, thank you, ladies. So informative. And then Tierra says, yes, this was awesome. And thank you. And so also for you ladies who are viewing tonight, I am offering a membership discount to you guys if you want to join um, BC, BC, w, BCWN and use the promotional code. I'll put this in here. And it's Career Smarts MC, and you can use that, and you will receive fifty percent off of a discount for your one year membership. I am being gracious tonight, <laughs> and become a member of BCWN. Part of this, part of the reason why we're launching our Career Smarts is because we're going to have a cohort, but we have the master classes, 
We have our smart guides. We have our career success strategy calls. And all of this is part of that membership. These videos will be in a replay within our Facebook group. But guess what? Next week, they're going away. And the only way you'll have access to those are going to be if you're a member and you are part of the Career Smarts cohort. So it's important for you to gain access to these as a member of BCWN. So if you want to refer back to the videos for notes or what have you, you'll have complete unlimited access to those. So they only will be available for a limited time in our Facebook group. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Also, too, what we have coming up in the next couple of weeks is going to be our um, launch of our first actual Career Smarts workshop itself, where we have a career guide and we'll have strategy calls included. And it's going to be called Getting Clear on Your Career Goals, helping you to develop a vision and a purpose for your next level. And so it's going to be all about the clarity and strategy and solutions that you need to get clear on what's next. And that's going to be our first workshop, actual where we're going to be doing the actual work. Rolling up our sleeves and, as Ilyana says, doing the work. So that is going to be I'm launching um, actually in two weeks when we'll be sending the date out. So just wanted to share that with you guys. And that um, my last thing for you, too, this is 9 o'clock on the dot. We did good, Callie. We didn't even go over. We did awesome. <laughs> Guys, that the life God gave you is larger than the life you've been living. And God gives us all special gifts and talents, and it's your job and your responsibility to discover what your talents and gifts are and to use those to work in your purpose. So I hope to see you guys tomorrow night on our last final Career Smarts Virtual Masterclass series. And take all this in, soak it in. The replay will be available right after this, and we will see you guys tomorrow night. Have a good night, Kelly. You hang on. Good night.